Hi everyone, Dennis Foley from Acoustic Fields. Today we're going to talk about the quarter wavelength rule. Uh, you read about this a lot in acoustics. We're going to look at it in three different areas. We're going to look at wavelengths and, and what they actually are and look at the, the middle part of, of this and, and get a handle on, on wavelength. And then once we understand wavelengths, then we can apply quarter and try to come up with some rules. I don't know where the word rule came from. Um, I don't really know what it means, but this is how it's used in the literature. And sometimes the words that are used in the literature are not really descriptive of the process, the theory, or the application. So let's, let's just walk through some of the things that we do know. And I think maybe some of the things that are uh, assumptions and take it for granted, we'll be able to uh, figure out after we define some. So. We'll look at wavelength, room acoustics, and sound absorption, those three areas and how it pertains to the quarter wavelength rule. So let's first look at wavelength. How do we figure out wavelength? Speed of sound is constant. Well, relatively so. And we'll do a video on that uh, moving through uh, air with different humidities and, and things like that. 60 cycles, 18 foot if we do the math. So we know that our 60 cycle wave is 18 foot long. And that's really all we have to know for this particular calculation. So if we take our 18 foot wave, we divide it by four because what is four? One fourth is quarter, right? We're gonna get um, four and a half feet. So if we take our 18 foot wave and we cut it up into quarter wavelength sections, to illustrate quarter wavelength rule, then we have each section at four and a half feet. All right, we just calculated how to figure wavelength and then from wavelength get quarter wavelength, obviously by just taking 25% of that. Now quarter wavelength rule is used mainly in acoustics and sound absorption technology. So let's Let's use an example of how it fits into acoustics. So this will help us, I think, through illustration and uh, example, get some uh, baseline understanding of, of quarter wavelength. So if we have a room that's 12 foot wide, we have a 60 cycle wave and we already determined the length of that wave was 18 feet. Well, our room's 12 foot. Okay, so what are we going to do? Well. We know that 18 feet and 12 aren't compatible. In fact, the 60 cycle wavelength for purposes of illustration is going to strike this wall and then rebound. Okay, so 12 is not going to fit. We still have 18 minus 12, we still have six feet. So it's going to really come out here six feet. So it's not exactly what happens, but I think in terms of understanding of how this relates to room acoustics, it, it'll help. So this is kind of the end point of the wave, but quarter wavelength tells us that at the 25% position of the length of the wave, we can have a big impact on the amplitude or strength of the wave by treating those particular positions because those are the particular positions based on quarter wavelength rule where room treatment is the most effective. Obviously having room treatment four and a half feet out into the room is not desirable. So we use other techniques and, and technologies, but this is kind of the basis that the room modal pressure is at that quarter wavelength position within the room. Now, where is that position? Well, that's the big question. And then secondly, obviously that position difference by difference uh, between frequencies. So the sound treatment within a room acoustic situation applying quarter wavelength rule is at that 25% of the wavelength mark inside the room, depending on their dimensions. All right, we calculated how to determine quarter wavelength. And then we looked at its impact in room acoustics producing modal pressure issues. Now let's look at sound absorption technology. What design parameters do we need in our sound absorbing technology knowing that this 25% of wavelength is really critical. It's position within the room. 
I used to say we need, through absorption, cut off the head and then the tail of the wavelength, treat it like a snake or something. And the quarter wavelength uh, rule illustrates that uh, point. So getting 25% of that wave through absorption technology should be the goal of any low frequency design. So, cause that will have an impact. Now, how great of an impact on, on it will depend on your design parameters, the sound absorption technology that you're using. And as you can see, as we work through these examples, you, you can see why we've chosen diaphragmatic absorption as our lead process for a low frequency sound absorption, because of all the technologies, Hemholtz, Membrane, and limp mass, any of those technologies, um, diaphragmatic will give you the most absorption in the smallest amount of space. So when we're looking at designing for low frequency energy, we know that 60 cycles is 18 foot long, quarter wavelength is our target. So how do we get this four and a half feet of sound absorption in our technology, in our products of today? Well, we'll save that discussion for another video because this centers on a lot of the misperceptions and conceptions in the room acoustic product uh, industry. So we'll deal with those in a, in a separate video. But this is something that you have to understand when it comes to quarter wavelength rule that when we design low frequency products, we have to keep quarter wavelength rule in mind. Hope you enjoyed Thank today's you. video. If you did, give me a thumbs up so I know that it had value to you. And please, if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section and I'll be more than happy to answer them for you. Alternatively, if there are other topics that you wish to discuss, discuss or see discussed in a video presentation, send me a, an email, info at acousticfields.com and uh, we'll get them on our list and, and get them done for you. I release a new uh, video about every week so stay tuned to our YouTube channel and keep uh, updated on our new videos.